Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I mounted the GoPro 8 to my helmet and put a battery on the back. So you can see here I've got the GoPro 8, the media mod, this arm attachment, puttied it to the helmet. I've got an anchor battery on back wired to the GoPro. So the GoPro is external power from that battery and then I've got a lavalier into the helmet so you can actually hear me nice and clean as I'm riding and this setup works great. This is my first time doing a, a helmet setup. I've never done it before, but it was fairly easy. I think anybody can do it. So the GoPro 8 has this media mod thing and the media mod gives you an audio in and you need that audio in or you need an adapter. I thought the media mod was a better setup. It's just a little bit cleaner looking instead of attaching a USB-C, you know, audio adapter, whatever it is. I didn't want to deal with that. I also wanted to power my GoPro. So with the media mod, you get the USB-C and the audio in, and it's real nice. I think the chin is the best placement for the GoPro if you're going to do moto vlogging uh, because you don't really feel any difference. And if you mount a battery on the back, it kind of balances one another out. Uh, but if you mount the GoPro on the side of your helmet or on the top of your helmet, you know, I would be afraid of losing it. At least if the GoPro falls off and it's mounted to your chin, it's most likely going to fall into your lap. You can see I've got a battery mounted on the back. So that's going to give the GoPro maybe like five hours of um, maybe like five charges. You should get a coverage time of somewhere north of five hours. I believe on a 256 gigabyte card in 4K with the highest bit rate, you can get something like five to seven hours. So I set up my helmet to for both the battery and the recording time in 4K to last at least five hours. So from the back, you can see I chose a smaller battery. I've seen people use the 10,000 milliamp batteries. I decided not to do that because I wanted it to be kind of a smaller fit. Now, here's the downside. Before you attach any of this stuff to your helmet, I highly recommend getting all of the components, including your GoPro, your media mod, and your uh, anchor battery or whatever kind of battery you get. Get all that stuff and plug it in and do the 4K test. Do all your testing on the settings you want to record on before mounting, mounting it to your helmet. Because here's the problem. My battery, this anchor one, only outputs maybe two amps uh, maximum. And what I found is that the GoPro, when it is plugged in to do 4K, when I'm filming in 4K on the highest bit rate, my GoPro wants a little bit more power than what this anchor battery can provide. I've plugged it into bigger battery packs and the GoPro will film continuously in 4K. But what happens on this guy is it will cut out. It might film for five or 10 seconds, but it cuts out because it's just looking for, the GoPro is looking for a little bit more juice than what this battery can output. So this is a one amp to charge battery and two amp output. So it does take maybe six hours to charge. It takes a while to fill up and then it's gonna only output two amps maximum. So if you get a little bit of a bigger battery like the 10,000 milliamp, which obviously is gonna increase the size and the weight on your helmet, so you know you got to think about the dynamics of if it's going to fall forward or backward on 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 your head if you put on this helmet my helmet fits pretty snug i can't really tell that i've even mounted a battery or a gopro to the front but just something to be aware of if you get a bigger battery obviously power wise the 6000 battery or whatever i've got it's like five or six thousand uh, milliamps this is enough to charge the gopro four or five times it's it's enough and uh, that'll give me plenty of recording time. So it's, it's not so much about the battery bank, it's about the output um, and amperage that you can get from the battery. So what you're gonna wanna do is just make sure that you get a battery that works with the GoPro on the settings that you want before you mount this stuff. Otherwise, you'll be feeling like me, oh, I should have tested this before I you know, mounted all this stuff. Because I was considering, okay, I could buy another $30 battery, just a little bit bigger step up that can output three amps. Um, but then I'm gonna be buying new mold, obviously another 20 bucks in Sugru putty. And then however long it takes for that to cure. I actually found a workaround for all this. Just unplug that cable in the battery that's powering the GoPro, press record, and then plug it into the external power. So let me say that again. If you start recording, and then plug in the external power battery, the GoPro will not glitch out and stop the 4K recording. I don't know why. 
Uh, I've seen other people with problems with uh, the 4K video just stopping, or if you do certain settings um, on the GoPro, it'll just stop if you do external power. Obviously, if you just press record and then plug in the battery, you know, I didn't have any problems. I did a test where I recorded for two hours straight, no problems. So for me, what I'm gonna do when I'm Moto vlogging now is I'm just going to press record, plug it in, and then put my helmet on. So pretty easy fix, not really a big deal. When you record on YouTube, and here's another thing, the 60 frames per second does not look so good on 1080p especially. The 60 frames per second looks okay if you upload in 4K. That 60 frames per second, YouTube just gobbles, like garbages it up and uh, the compression is terrible. I'm gonna just stick to 24 frames per second or try that out on my next video. You're gonna get a better compression result. So you can see on the back, I used the Sugru stuff. I would not trust the double-sided tape. I would not trust that stuff. I tried it on my helmet. It did not work. So that's why I went with the putty stuff and I was like, yeah, this should, this should work, why not, you know? And it did. The weight that it can handle is about four or five pounds. It comes in little packets. A pack of three for 10 bucks. That pack of three is enough to get maybe the battery alone. So I used four packets of Sugru on the battery and five packets of Sugru on the GoPro mount. You can probably get away with a little bit less, but I think for the Sugru stuff, you're definitely gonna wanna buy more than you think you need because what it comes in these little packets is very tiny, very small. You just find yourself as you continuously mold, you're gonna need little extra bits in order to smooth everything out. It doesn't move quite as easily as, as you might think it would for this purpose. So I used four Sugru packets for the battery and five Sugru packets for the GoPro. That all together is nine and it comes three little um, packages in a pack. You might be able to get away with a little bit less, but I would recommend getting more than you need. And then, um, you know, if you have extra, you know, revisit if it, if it comes out with any cracks or if it's not perfectly sealed, um, you know, revisit it, save a packet and revisit um, the, the molding after two hours and just make sure that it's really on there. Obviously, I'd rather spend an extra 10 bucks on Sugru plastic than an extra three or $400 replacing the GoPro and the Media Mod should they detach. So it takes 12 to 24 hours, maybe 48 hours if you have a large putty amount um, to cure. And then once it cures, it's kind of like a rubbery plastic. And it did bind to the helmet and it's pretty well attached. So I'm not worried about either the GoPro or the battery falling off. Uh, the reason I put tape over the putty, that's kind of like a gaffer's tape. Um, I put gaffer's tape over because the putty doesn't dry perfectly. So you can kind of see a lot of shadows and lighting. It just kind of looks a little weird and it dries as a lighter gray. I got the black Sugru and it dries as a lighter gray. I might have a photo of it that I can throw into the video. Um, but I, I just thought with the gaffer's tape, it would help kind of blend it in a little bit better uh, instead of just looking like it's this uh, Play-Doh attached to the helmet. When you're more than a couple feet away or when you're all geared up, you can't really tell. So obviously on this side, you can see the tape, but on the other side, you can't. The GoPro sits very close to the helmet, so you cannot use the screen too well. If you tilt the helmet, you know, kind of up, you can kind of get your finger in there and mess around. But what I do is I just connect on the phone since the GoPro 8 has the, uh, you have the GoPro app on your phone and you can do uh, just about everything, set the settings and whatever. I mean, I'm not really adjusting the settings on my GoPro anyways, because I just bought it for the helmet. Um, so, you know, once you set up the settings, you're good to go. All you need to do is turn it on and press the record button. And if you do need to do anything else, obviously you can detach it, but that's kind of a pain. The reason I mounted it so close to my chin is I was afraid if I turned my head that maybe, um, you know, the wind would catch it. I'm not really sure. Um, but I, I felt like if I mounted it any further forward, it would have fallen off. But now having done it, I almost wish that I mounted it further away from the chin, you know, more space in there, just because I, I know now that the putty stuff cures pretty hard. So that Sugru stuff does work as long as you don't have like an oily plastic helmet, you'll have to read some of the instructions. They gave a couple examples on there. You can probably go look on their website into what it will bind to. But I think this helmet is made of polycarbonate 
and it's it should I mean it's obviously on there and I have not had it fly off yet so um, it works for me your helmet may may vary a little bit you can obviously try it with a 20 or 30 dollar battery first and see if the battery attaches to the helmet before putting the four three hundred dollar GoPro on there you can see my cables I've got the that's the USB-C that powers it from the battery pack and then you've got the aux in cable from the uh, lavalier that I've wired into the helmet and it just barely gets in there you kind of got to plug it in you know figure out how you want to mold this thing with the putty it's a bit tricky when you do it and I spent maybe like two hours getting the putty just right um, trying to make sure that there's no cracks or um, that it blends in nicely with the helmet so that it's it's really like sloping nicely you can see how I've just taken the battery wire and kind of shoved it into the padding and up towards the GoPro so in between that padding and the outer shell of the helmet the cable should catch if something should fall off either the battery or the GoPro it's pretty well stuck in there and obviously you could tape tape it down this is a HJC C70 I think and I just picked this helmet or they just gave me this helmet when I bought the scooter so I didn't really um, you know try anything on we're in the shut down so I wasn't able to try on a bunch of stuff uh, like several helmets they just handed me one and I was like sure this works and then I bought it so it's not like I did any research on the helmet the lavalier I did on the, the other side of the helmet and it's also I taped it in there just to make it a little nicer what I did was is I put my lavalier kinda up by my chin area I think I haven't tried it without the wind muff I think the wind muff uh, or the dead cat or whatever you want to call it that wind puff thing is gonna make um, a little bit of a difference because or a lot of helmets on the front are gonna have that you know vent so put put the dead cat in there and obviously you could get wind from the bottom too so it's important to to get your lavalier in there right I took out the padding just a little bit or kinda wired it through there um, most padding it seems like it's kind of a snap in so there's like little snaps that you can unsnap and resnap, or you can kind of just shove the wire through there. It's really not that hard. Um, wiring, putting the lavalier in was, was very easy. Um, and a lot, a lot of people are using this purple microphone. I'm using a Rode microphone because that's what I had lying around, but you can use whatever. Obviously, test things out and uh, you know do your own research. But you saw all those cables, how they're tucked into the helmet. And um, you know, I'd have to lose both cables detachments in order for me to lose the GoPro because it's plugged into the lavalier and it's plugged into the battery. I just don't think it's going to detach. I mean, just as a proof of concept, what I did was I detached the GoPro and now I'm showing it um, hanging from the cables alone. I don't, I don't really see this thing falling off. You know, I got two cables in there and the lavalier is wrapped into the helmet and my head is on there. So at worst, the GoPro is gonna be flopping around, but at least you won't lose it, probably. And there you go, guys. I think it's pretty easy to set up. I mean, in total, the longest part was using the Sugru stuff and, and molding it. One thing I will say about the Media Mod is that you are unable to uh, you know, swap out the battery easily and unable to swap out the SD card easily. But what I do is I just, I just leave the whole helmet together uh, so I've kind of designated this as a GoPro um, only for the helmet and I don't plan to use the GoPro for anything else. It's not that tricky to unmount. You can do it. It's just going to take you a little bit of time um, because it's, it's so close to the helmet and then the wires are pretty close. But if you mount your GoPro a little bit further away from the chin, um, you should have a little bit easier time swapping batteries, using the GoPro for other purposes, and so on and so forth. But for me, I just leave the GoPro on there. I don't really care. I, I have some older GoPros that I might attach to the bike um, facing me or facing different angles. I think they're GoPro 3 or 4s, something like that. Um, I could also buy another GoPro 7 or 8 because the difference between the 7 and 8 uh, to the 3 or 4 is, is insane. I think the GoPro 8 looks a little bit better than the GoPro 7. Obviously, I thought it was enough to justify the extra. I think it was like 70 bucks right now um, to go with the GoPro 8, but that's me. Bam! Now you got a GoPro on your helmet and you can be an awesome vlogger.